In our busy lives, we're not aware that we're moving closer to our death with each passing moment. Often we don't even want to think about death and we believe it won't happen anytime soon. Yet, death is definite and the time of death is uncertain. The Buddha says the most intelligent way to make your life meaningful is to remember your death, not to hide from it. If you were to take a trip, you'd prepare for it by looking at a map so you'd know where you were headed. The same way we need to think about the most important trip of this lifetime, our death and rebirth. Remembering our death is an integral part of taking the essence of this life. There's a profound power that is awakened in us by contemplating death and rebirth. We're inspired to practice the Dharma in everything we do and not to waste another moment of our precious human lives. Each of us is going to die, from the smallest to the largest animal, from the poorest to the richest human being. In this program, we will examine the fact that all of us will eventually have to face the suffering of death. In this, we are all alike. And the truth is, we don't know when our death will occur. With this perspective, not knowing which of our actions will be the very last in this lifetime, the practice of motivation becomes especially important. Therefore, before you listen to the teachings on death and rebirth, generate in your mind an especially strong thought, a strong motivation, wishing to be able to use every moment of this life in order to make it purposeful and meaningful, in order to eventually be able to liberate all living beings from their suffering and bring them to the happiness of enlightenment. It is necessary for the spiritual practitioner to reflect upon impermanence and particularly death, the possibility of the um, inevitability of death and so on. Now, uh, impermanence in terms of the continuum, which is the reflection on death. So when we talk about impermanence in the context here, the primary contemplations are uh, 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 reflection upon three important facts, which are that death is inevitable. Um, uh, so far as the actual uh, eventuality of death is concerned, uh, there is, it is unpredictable. It can strike any moment. And the third is that at the point, at the time of death, only Dharma, one's spiritual practice will be of benefit. Um, to take an example uh, our, of immediately of our own case, uh, for example, tonight, this night, um, most of us feel that um, um, <clears throat> um, you know we'll be will be alive. And um, however, if you if you examine this carefully, um, we we may think that um, yes, I'm healthy. Um, there are all the, there is no um, medical or physical conditions that threaten my life. And even if there are um, um, external kind of natural conditions such as earthquake. If earthquake were to strike California uh, tonight, I may be able to escape and, and, and avoid the danger. So one can conclude quite justifiably that 99% that we will be you know, alive. However, there is a 1%. We cannot say 100% with guarantee that we will be still alive. So when the phenomenon called death really strikes, at that instance, then no matter how much wealth you have, 
they are of no significance. Um, your families and relatives are of no significance. Even the very body that you have cherished and carried and always had with you will, will be uh, no more. It will be of no, no use for you. Uh, for example, in my own case, um, while I'm alive, I have friends, I have people to turn to when, when in need. Uh, I can ask people to help me, people are willing to help me and so on. But when I die, at that point, no one can help me. It's me, I myself alone, who has to go on the path, who has to travel. Then the question arises, you know, what then? What, uh, um, what then after death? Um, here, of course, it brings up the issue of uh, rebirth, the question of rebirth. Uh, from the Buddhist point of view, uh, rebirth has to be understood in terms of a continuity of consciousness. So one of the sort of the foundational premises of the Buddhist understanding of the possibility of rebirth is understanding of the continuity of consciousness um, even after death. Buddhists um, do not accept, do not posit beginning to the continuum of consciousness. The Buddhist explains the nature and existence of consciousness purely in terms of uh, causes and conditions, the principle of causes and conditions. So um, as the text points out, um, um, the question of where, where you will depart after the death is uh, influenced and determined by uh, your own karmic uh, collections, uh, not only uh, of this life, but also your past karmic actions. And, um, and, and on this point, um, um, as Vasubandhu has written that, um, because all of us will have uh, enormous uh, uh, collections of karma uh, accumulated uh, over many past lives. So all of us will have karmic uh, potentials to take rebirth both in the um, lower realms of existence and more fortunate realms of existence. In general, I know people in the West, they don't want to hear by, about impermanence and death. Why? They feel like uh, they become unhappy, they become, they become sad, therefore it's better not to hear about, better not to think, yeah, I'll be dying, I'll be dying some, some time in the future, but that doesn't mean that I need to think about it now, otherwise I'll get, uh, uh, I'll get so sad. So this is very wrong. This is very wrong because it's the opposite way around. We don't want to be saddened at the, mime, at the time of death, completely overwhelmed with fears. With fears, not be able to do anything at the time is right now that we are alive, that we have to think about it. In this way, if we are able to think about it now correctly and to make the right preparation, it will be like the good child, like for a good child to go back home. Uh, will experience a great deal of happiness at the time of dying. Even if you're able to recollect Dharma practice, if you don't uh, recollect that and impermanent, impermanence and that, you won't be practicing anyway. You will be only thinking, oh yeah, I must, I must practice Dharma, but I can do it tomorrow. First I have to do something else, so I can do it the day after tomorrow or I can do it the next year and so forth. So as Ramadan uh, says, in this way, by thinking oh, I can do it later, I can do it later, the whole life goes by and you won't be able to achieve anything. Mm -hmm. So even if you're able to recollect uh, Dharma practice, you won't be able to practice it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if you don't recollect that and imp impermanence and that, you won't be able to abandon the uh, <laughs> fantasies related to this life. Uh, that means that uh, whatever Dharma practicing you will do, it, is not, it, it won't be pure Dharma, it won't become Dharma practice, and uh, your mind will be trapped uh, within the eight worldly Dharmas. 
in brief, no matter what kind of external or internal methods or wherever I go, whatever I do, that won't, won't prevent me from dying. Therefore, definitely I'm going to die. That is certain. I'm not going to last in this place. Mm -hmm. So think about the causes. Think about the causes that bring one of the uncommon special causes uh, that result in a precious human rebirth is the perfect practice of morality. So now, check in your mental continuum. As the Kadampalama says, uh, if you want to know who you were before, look at the condition of your life now. If you want to know where you're going to be or what you're going to be in the future, look at the condition of your mind now. So this is very true. The uncommon condition of uh, achieving a precious human rebirth is the practice of morality. If those uncommon causes such as morality is not being sown in the, in the mental continuum, there is no way of achieving the result that one wish for. So this awareness that my life, my uh, surrounding, my experience of this world can cease, stop at any moment. And I have to go alone, leave all this behind at any moment. That daily awareness, you know, gives a certain sense of space. It doesn't, things don't feel so real, so permanent, so fixed, you know, so uh, dependable anymore. You know, the only thing we take with us is our mind. Yeah? And so, uh, uh, do we want, you know, do we want to uh, keep our mind uh, uh, deluded, attached, fearful, and is that what we want to take with us? You know? We have to question ourselves. <coughs> do I want to take with me anger, jealousy, you know, uh, resentment, pride, and attachment? The attachment that gives so much rise to fear and worry. And that's not the things we want to take with us at a time of death. You know, we want to take with us, at a time of death we all want to have a happy death, isn't it? We want to have a peaceful, happy death. So what state of mind is that? That's, you know, detachment, compassion, kindness, wisdom. Mm. If you meditate every day on your own, impermanent nature, and that my death can happen at any time, you know, you will, it automatically generates a state of detachment. Because, uh, you know, it's like when we travel, we go from hotel room to hotel rooms. When you travel, you are living in the nature of impermanence, you know? You don't become attached to your hotel rooms, you don't regard them as mine, you don't try to fix them up, or, you know, you just go, stay as long, and then you are okay with leaving. You don't even think about it, you just leave behind and go to the next. That state of mind we need to cultivate in our daily life. So you see, death is definite. All of us are going to have to face death. There's no escape, isn't it? There's absolutely no escape, you know? Nobody can avoid death. Nobody can run away from death. 
Nobody can escape death. Nobody can bribe death. Yeah. Our death is 100% definite. And we're going to go one by one. A few years, this room, empty, isn't it? What, 50 years, this room is definitely empty, I think. <laughs> All of us have died and gone to some unknown destination. You know, mind going to some unknown destination. And the precious human life finished. No certainty to uh, get, you know, regain such a uh, life situation and opportunity again. It took us many years to, to get to this point, you know. And who knows whether even we will be born in a place where we can practice Dharma next life. Then you feel this urgent, uh, you know, not to postpone Dharma practice, but to start from now. Check how can I integrate Dharma into my life now to make it meaningful from now on, because my, de my death can happen at any time. I think uh, um, a main motivation for this came from my work as an, as an ambulance car driver where, where I saw many people dying and uh, I realized that uh, people can't die, I mean they, they are just, I saw immense suffering and immense uh, they, they, I, d I didn't see any peaceful death. I, I read about peaceful death in books, but this is not how people actually die. They, they die screaming and full of fears and it's just horrible and it's nightmares. And so I remember especially, uh, I, I, I went once to a case where a young guy was the same age as me was stepped down with a knife. And so he was lying there in his blood and screaming and, and, and he was dying. And, and before I was, uh, I was working uh, on a farm, so I thought, uh, I, I went to the slaughterhouse and I saw pigs dying. And I thought, he's dying like these pigs, there's no difference. And, and, but something in me knew it's not necessary to die like this. No, it's, it's just not necessary. It's a mistake. And uh, yeah, and so my practices and my life as a monk is a preparation for my death. Not only for me to have a good death, but also to reach a level of practice where I can help other people to die. They always say you can die at any time, you know. 
and as a nurse I've nursed people my own age my own age who are dying of cancer with under terrible conditions with terrible suffering and their whole body has changed to what they usually recognize it as and I look at them and I think gosh that could be me that could really be me but I think now what's important is that every moment is an opportunity if you're still alive I think that's the point that every moment is so precious and we don't know how many moments we have left so let's try to do the best we can with each moment and it makes life much more pleasant and so much more meaningful and I, that's the other thing about people who are dying then they start to focus on was their life meaningful and it's important to focus on that now while we have time to do something about it rather than wait until we've only got two weeks left and we don't have any time to do all the things we really wanted to do so that's why um, I guess I'm more motivated now we want things to stay the way they are and they can never be that way because they never are that way so that reality really hit me I think if people die with a really happy frame of mind that they have more chance of going to a higher, re a better rebirth um, not going into the lower realms because it would be so easy to die with fear and then I'm sure that would be a very good migration because you look at the animal realm and it's all about fear all the animals are in fear so that's very easy for me to believe in the animal realm because, and being born in the animal realm because if people die in fear that's probably where they're going to go I was with a man who was a fisherman and you could just see that he had visions like the Lama say of all the animals that he had killed and his eyes are going all over the place and he was terrified the other thing is I tried to get people to um, generate some kind of love in their heart you know love and appreciate for their family you know sometimes they don't feel good about themselves they feel that they've not done nothing good in their lives and I say well you raised children you raised a family you've done a good job with this you know they should rejoice in what they have done what they've done that's good in their life focus on that that's the important thing before they die is focus on the good things and if they have regrets then they see those regrets as positive as something that they've learned in this life and even rejoice that they've learned that instead of feeling guilty and oh I'm a failure they should stay positive there was a, a man from Burma and he had a wife and two daughters and he was looked after by a hospice service in the city and Amitabha was called in because we're the only service that's Buddhist so he took his bed a mattress and put it in his shrine room in the house and he put his head towards his shrine and he told his wife um, I don't want much fuss over me leave me alone I've got to concentrate now because I'm going to die and all the public services in who were looking after him never had seen this before because usually people are so scared and they need so many drugs especially mental drugs to calm people down because they're terrified but he didn't need anything and all the other workers were so surprised he doesn't need any drugs he's so calm and everybody who came into the house felt so peaceful so unique so unbelievable and um, his wife and his daughters looked after him and it was like he was in his last retreat before he died and he was just a model for everyone who, who came into the house everyone spoke so highly of him and had never seen anything so peaceful before